chapter 7, Types and Aspects, Intercessions. Notice Rotherham. In this self-same way, moreover, even the Spirit helps together in our weakness. For what we should pray for as we ought, we know not. But the Spirit itself makes intercession with sighings unutterable. Panin, and in like manner the Spirit also helps our weakness, for we know not how to pray as to the degree necessary, but the Spirit himself intercedes mightily for us with groanings unutterable. EBM, in the same manner the Spirit also jointly takes hold with us against our weakness. For the thing, what we might pray for, according to the proportion it is necessary, we have not seen and know. Moreover, the Spirit himself is making intercession over it with inexpressible groanings. This verse tells us that the Spirit of God is doing something. Notice the Greek text, ta, pneuma, sunantilabanetai, te, asthenei, humon which is the spirit grasped together with our weakness, or literally in the weakness of us. This is the Greek present middle passive definite third person singular verb of the Greek word soon anti lambanomai, meaning here with this grammar, he grabs together with for himself. Note also the 27th verse present indicative active intercedes and on behalf of us, which comes from three Greek words, soon together with an ante placed in front of an lambano to take the main verb here is the verb thought to take the other two words are to assist the main idea of the verb of taking these two other prepositions which make up this compound verb the first preposition is soon meaning together with and the second preposition is ante originally meant placed in front of another, so the second preposition's main idea meant opposite or in opposition. But it can take on from the context other ideas, such as a barter where one thing is being substituted for another or exchanged. Hence, it would be instead of or in the place of. In compound verbs like this, though, it can take on ideas of comparison, reciprocity, contrariety, and opposition, or even set against, or also even someone taking someone's place. But most Greek lexicons, such as Freeberg's analytical lexicon, states it, its meaning in the New Testament means to grab hold with someone, hence helpfully, or help and aid which is taking place. The idea of this compound verb is to assist or grasp with. So if we look at the setting of the verb in the context, it looks like this. Ta, numa, sunantila banatai, te, asthenei, humon. The spirit he takes or grabs together with in our weakness. And again, there's a sentence. We don't take the sentence apart and just take a word. Notice again, this literal translation may sound a little strange to our English ears. That is, the spirit takes or grabs together with in our weakness. But we can see that the compound verb is attached to another noun idea in this context. And that's the point that has to be understood. It does not stand as a thought by itself. So, soon anti lambanatai does not stand by itself in this context. The compound verb is not to be thought of only by itself. In sentences, verbs are used to express ideas together with other words in the sentence. And here, in this context, the noun phrase, tain, asthenei, uh, humon, is the data singular feminine noun, noun meaning weakness. Here also, the article is placed with the noun emphasizing the certain weakness, not just a quality of weakness, but a certain weakness. So he's trying to point out a certain kind of weakness here. And then the genitive first person plural pronoun is used of us or our. So together making the complete thought to mean he, the spirit, takes or grasps together with in the weakness our or in our weakness. Or the Holy Spirit is grasping together with it the weakness which all humans possess. Even though we are born again, we still possess this problem. The next thought in this context gives us the explanation, what is this weakness which all Christians possess? Notice again, 
Cain, Asthenei, Humon, Tagar, T, Prosyuxometha. In the weakness hour, for the what we might pray for. In most languages today, the word what refers to the subject of something. The word how describes the means by which something is done. God's word is telling the Christian, we, the believer, have a weakness. And as far as that goes, so does every human. We do not know everything. And even if you were a mature Christian and developed spiritually and have grown spiritually to the place of walking out of your human spirit hand in hand with God's spirit, where you might have a greater possibility to know and perceive things, but we still all have this weakness, and here in this context, which is stated in Romans 8, we do not know what to pray or intercede for, or you could say the subject matter of prayer. We do not know to the extent necessary to pray. And remember, this context is not talking about supplications or the prayer of faith or the prayer of submission. It's talking about true intercession. And remember that it's speaking to born-again, Spirit-filled New Testament Christians, those who have the Holy Spirit in them. The main point in this verse here is that we humans all have a problem. We're not all-knowing. We're not omniscient. In this context, there is a singular words and plural words which represents people and individuals. In this verse, the word we is plural and means Christians. So we, the Christians, have, in this verse, one weakness. It is stated, we do not know what to pray as we need to. Does that mean in every kind of prayer we have this weakness? In the prayer of thanksgiving? In the prayer of supplication? In the prayer of submission? Think about it. In the prayer of faith, we don't have information, so we can just know faith pleases God, and we need to grow in faith. No, of course not. This is not true. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by God's word, and it is written down for us to know his will so that our faith may grow up into the knowledge of God. But what if God's word does not give us truth about a subject? Then we cannot know it to do it. And what then? Again, what kind of prayer is this context speaking about? It is a prayer of intercession. It is an intervening type of prayer. If the Holy Spirit is grabbing or grasping or helping us, because we have a weakness of not knowing what to pray or intercede about. This sounds a lot like Abraham and Moses out of the Old Testament, does it not? Remember, if God did not tell them what they needed to pray about, or the subject matter, or what prayer to be prayed about, they would have not known. Note these three words in this section of the 26th and the 27th verses of this Greek text. Notice what it says. Ta numa sunanti labanatai. Te asthenei humon, then ta numa huperentu kene stenagmois, then tu numatas hati kata thean intu kene. The first one being the spirit jointly takes a hold with us against our weakness. The second one, the spirit intercedes on behalf with sighs. The third one, the Spirit, because according to God, he intercedes. In these Greek sections of these 27th and 26th verses, it says the Spirit he grabs or takes a hold of together against. With us, but it says in the complete sentence, with us in the weakness or our weakness. The article is used in the Greek to point out a, to us a certain weakness in reference to intercession, which all humans individually possess which is a prayer to stop or alter some coming danger. It says the Spirit grabs a hold in our weakness. Our weakness is stated here. We do not know what to pray, or literally according to the proportion it is necessary. We have not seen and know. Another thing necessary in this context to get the sense of these verses is to point out here the word pray. The word pray is prosyuxometha, and this Greek word is the aorist middle definite subjunctive first person plural verb of the Greek word prosukamai, to make or offer prayer to. The grammar of this Greek verb here in this context, prosuxometha, being first the Greek aorist tense, which shows us a point in time or in an event of prayer. 
It's like a point on a page as compared to a line on a page. He's trying to reveal to us the event that could happen as compared to the continual praying of some event. Or, like I said, it's a point, it's not a line, or it's not present tense. And this would show to us, it does not show a prayer in the process of happening. An event as an overview is not the same as showing something in the process of it happening. But the prayer which is being contemplated as an event without details. You could say it an event of prayer. Then also the Greek mood of this Greek verb is subjunctive. Again, this may be a little difficult for some people, but the subjunctive mood denotes the idea of contingency or might happen, where the Greek indicative mood states reality, or it is happening, or it was happening, or it did happen and happening still. This subjunctive mood states possibility. That is, it's possible to happen. It's possible to be prayed. And in this case, it would be possible to intercede. It does not mean, though, here in this context, prayer is happening, or prayer was happening, or even prayer has happened and still continues happening, which other Greek moods would reveal to us if they stood here in this context. But that prayer conditionally might happen. That's why it's subjunctive. It's trying to reveal that prayer might happen, which in a sense means it could under some conditions happen. And that being intercession might happen under some conditions. And this section goes without saying this is God looking at us Christians interceding. So this Greek grammar means that we might make intercession, that is, we might not also. And the implication here is, if the condition does not change, and we have seen what is stated in this verse which speaks of the condition, for we know not what we should pray as we ought. Rotherham states this, for what we should pray as we ought, we know not. Pannon says, for we know not how to pray as to the degree necessary. The EBM text says, for we might pray according to the proportion that is necessary. We all have a weakness, and these verses are pointing out the human element. We all have a weakness of not knowing the needed information that's needed to pray. And as I have noted, God gave to us his written word to have us to know his will so we would not be ignorant. Note again, it said in the context that we, by this subjunctive mood, we might pray. Let also look at this grammar of these three Greek words for intercession here. The first word, soon ante lambanitai, this is the, either the middle or the passive voice because it's passive definite. It is the present tense definite third person verb. The second word for pray, hooper in tukine, this is the present indicative active third person verb. And number three, intukane, this is the present indicative active third person singular verb. If we look at these three Greek verbs in these verses, we will notice something about the person called the Holy Spirit interceding. First, the number two and the number three verbs, these verbs have the same Greek grammar in the Greek text. These two verbs both have active voice in the Greek language. The voice of the Greek verbs denotes the relationship between the action being stated of the verb and the subject or person of the action doing or expressing itself in the verb, or who is doing the verb, or it is being done by this one. Here, the active voice means the subject or person, the spirit, is the actual doer. You could say it this way. The spirit is the initiator of and the actual doer of the action here called intercession in these two verbs. And in the second word, he is doing intercession on behalf of us Christians. The number one verb has a definite, which is the Latin word mean laid aside, which basically means it's lost its sense of its ending, meaning that to the Greek voice, middle or passive, which causes it, its voice to be actually, in effect, an active voice also here. So the Greek text in this context tells us in all three verbs describing intercession that the Spirit of God is the initiator and the actual interceding one. Then we can go on and figure out why this statement. Notice the EBM text in Romans 8, 26 and 27. 
But in the same manner, the Spirit also jointly takes a hold with us against our weakness. For the thing what we might pray for, according to the proportion it's necessary, we have not seen and know. Moreover, the Spirit himself is making intercession over it with inexpressible groanings. 27th verse, But the one searching the heart fully knows what is the view of the Spirit, because according to God he intercedes on behalf of the saints. Now let's look why. The number one statement says, against our weakness. For the thing what we might pray for, according as it is necessary, we do not know. The second statement says, over it, that is, over what we don't know, with inexpressible groanings. And the number three statement, because according to God, he, the Spirit, intercedes on behalf of saints. The number one statement tells us why the Spirit is starting intercession. He is grasping together with our weakness because we do not know what to pray or intercede to the degree that is necessary. The number two statement tells us that the Spirit is making intercession over it, our weakness, that is the weakness we are not knowing what to pray about. And number three, the statement tells us when the Spirit of God, he himself is interceding, he is doing so according to God. So the Spirit of God in the earth, in the heart of believer, and God in heaven are working together to make intercession on behalf of the Christian upon the earth. But these verses do not state here in this context when we the Christian know to intercede because there is a problem to be interceded about, the Spirit grabs together with us. It does not say that in this context. It says he, the Spirit of God, takes hold with us in the very weakness which we all have. We are not omniscient. We do not know everything. Also note the phrase in Rotherham, Panem, and the EBM text. Rotherham states that we don't know. Panem states it, for we know not. The EBM text is more literal. We have not seen and know it. In other words, we have not seen it. That is what we're supposed to pray about or intercede about. And we still do not know. This phrase beneath the English text in the Greek phrase 26, uk oidemon, we know not, oidemon, the, the Greek word, which, which is a verb, which is the perfect indicative active first person plural verb, literally meaning here we have not seen or perceived and know it, which means we do not keep on knowing it because we have not seen and perceived it. That is to say, in the time of intercession or when we need to intercede as to stop or alter some event or some bad thing happening so as it will not happen. We have not seen or you could say perceived it. And so not knowing what is to be interceded about, to intercede to the degree which is necessary, that is to stop it or alter it. And this is so because, again, the word intercession means to intervene or stop something. When intercession needs to be prayed, when something needs to be stopped or altered, the what or subject is our problem. We don't know what it is we need to pray or stop. Again, we do not know what to pray or intercede about. So the thought of this 26th verse is us not knowing what to intercede about, and God's word calls it a weakness. But Jesus and God in heaven, and of course the Holy Spirit who is taking Jesus' place in our heart, they do know what to intercede about. Also note there is a qualifier in the section on the what ideal or the weakness thought. 